Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome to episode 56 of Game Programming. So last time we took a look at a fairly, you know, non-efficient way to actually handle loading tiles and thus loading levels. Um, and we got this sort of result where, um, well, the level worked, but it's just a really messy way of doing it. Um, and we did actually end up loading that level for file. Um, and one thing you might have noticed actually, uh, actually, is that I'm using a different microphone. Um, I'm using like a head. I'm using my headset mic just because it's a lot easier to, you know, to move around, I guess, and to um, to actually, you know, make videos with it. If they're live commentary, just because there isn't some massive thing in front of me obscuring the screen. So um, let me know if this if this sound quality is bearable. If it is, then I'll just continue using this, and it'll be a lot easier for me. Anyway, back to this. So we're we're just gonna get rid of basically all this. I just wanted to show you guys that method just for fun, but you're not really going to be using it that much. So, get tile. We're going to use this method. So, what we've got going on right now is um, is this generate level thing. This, it kind of generates a level, right? But instead of actually looking up a certain thing here, we want to sort of transfer this level pixels thing into here. So, how is that going to work? How is that going to work? That's sort of the big thing here. How is it going to work? So, the way that it's actually going to work is pretty simple. Um, we're gonna basically, I should probably change that to tiles eventually, but we've already got this tile. So first of all, let's go back into level and delete our tile tiles array. So our array of tiles will disappear. And when we do that, so in other words, we don't really need this generate me uh, general level method anymore. Um, what we'll do over here is we'll actually refactor that. So if you right click, hit, um, hit refactor and then rename or 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 you could just hit alt shift r that works as well um and we'll just call it tiles just so that um we don't get confused so now that we've got this tiles thing here we need to basically find a way to i guess read it all right um now because we've got a subclass to it i'm just thinking about how i'm going to do this um the best way to do it is probably going to be to somehow um, import this tiles level into it. Now, one, adva one advantage that we actually have straight away is that um, we can only have one level loaded at once, and that sort of makes that sort of makes me think straight away. All right, well, if we can only have one level loaded at one time, it makes sense that there's just a global variable in the level class that handles the actual level data, right? I mean, if we're gonna, if, if we can only have one level loaded, then we just need one variable. So I'm gonna make a protected int tiles called, just right straight over here, and it's going to be an array as well of tiles. And this is going to contain all of the levels tiles. So if you think about it this way, this this array is going to contain the color values of every level, so another, of, of every pixel on that level. So in other words, if I actually find my, um, the image, so give me a minute, I'm just going to find the image. All right, here we go. So if I actually open up this level, you'll see that we have different colors, right? And that integer is actually going to store the different colors of, it's going to store this entire image as a pixel array, right? So in other words, it'll store the location of every pixel as well as um, its color. So it'll have a bunch of indexed integers which contain the color of every pixel you see here, which we can then use to actually generate and display our level. Now, think of it this way. Because we can only have one level loaded at one time, this tiles thing is going to contain the tiles of the level that is currently loaded. All right? So that when we actually go to get tile over here, we'll actually just be able to say that if tiles x plus y times width equals a certain color, so in other words, in our case, if we actually, I already deleted this, but we've still got the remainder of these things. So let me just adjust these values quickly, because remember, they were actually like this, right? Um, we know that grass is that color, so we can just say if that is equal to this, then we'll return tile.grass. If, um, let me just cut and paste this over here. Um, because multiple levels will contain the same tiles, so obviously, you know, if you have a, um, I don't know, if you have like a spawn level and like a forest biome, let's just say, they're gonna 
they're, they're both gonna possibly have grass tiles, right? So that's why we're gonna just make this get tile method up in the level class, in the superclass of all the other subclasses. So we know that. Uh, we also know that, uh, let's just say flower, so flower's that color, right? And then rock is this color. Awesome, and then if we don't find anything, we'll return a void tile and avoid a crash. So let's get rid of that now, now that, we have, now that we're all mapped in here. And we've got everything going on. Um, actually, I'll keep that there just in case I add other, other things. You guys might like some annotated code. Okay, well, awesome. So now that I've got this, we need a way to actually set tiles equal to that. And the best way to do that is probably to just get rid of this, really. We've got a private in here called tiles. If we get rid of that, you'll see that we don't get any errors. And the reason we, we don't get an error is because um, we're, we're referring to the super class tiles, integer, array, integer, array, <laughs> just an array of integers. Awesome. So right now, let's go ahead and check out what we get. All right. So now, similar to the other thing, we get a blue screen and it looks like we're nowhere to be found in the level. Now, a few reasons could be causing that. First of all, blue screen means that, well, means that there's a bunch of void tiles, which means that probably none of these things are actually adding up correctly. So let's take a look at this. Um, so we're scanning through all of these, and it looks like um, when we try and get the tile, which is what we're trying to do and render it, um, the, mo the most common thing here, well, first of all, actually, let's just re finish replacing that and see if that does anything. All right. Um, now, because the player is supposed to start at zero, zero, um, the most common thing that probably went wrong here is that we didn't actually set the tiles, right? So in other words, we've got this tiles variable, but it's not set to anything. In spawn level, we sort of put it to new int, but you can see that our generator level is actually empty. And the way that we can do that is basically, you see that this tiles variable does actually have a bunch of colors you know, attributed to it. So in other words, we've put colors into this tile variable. So in other words, let's just, in generate level, let's just take a look at something, right? Let's just say, let's print tiles plus tiles, and I don't know, we'll just print tile number zero, right? So in other words, that is really the top left most tile. So we get a color, great. Let's actually, it's a negative color, which immediately tells me that it's got alpha, alpha support in it, which is good. That's great, because um, you can see here that we actually need some alpha support out the front for everything else to work. So now, um, now we can, uh, let's just try, well actually no, that, that basically tells us that it works straight away. So we've already got a color um, attributed to it, but the only thing is it's not showing up now. So why isn't it showing up? First of all, let's just diagnose this quickly by, um, Seeing if the problem is this, and if it is this, then okay, it is that. So in other words, this method is never being um, run. It seems that we're always okay. So it seems straight away to me that this is this is how men solve coding problems. So it seems that yeah, okay. So it seems that this is constantly an issue here, um, and that's fine. It seems that there's something wrong with this code, All right? So obviously this code is constantly being ran because it seems that for some reason, for some reason, our x is actually less than zero. Our y is less than zero. Our x is greater than or equal to width, or our y is greater than or equal to height is always being ran. So, so why is that happening? There's a cliffhanger for you guys. See if you can work this one out. Later, guys.